My name is John Wong, and I am the director of the Cardiac Cath Lab at MedStar Union Memorial Hospital, as well as the director of the Structural Heart Program. Atrial fibrillation is the most common arrhythmia in the elderly. Patients may go to their doctor saying they feel an irregular heartbeat or that their heart rate is very fast or sometimes even very slow. Some patients with atrial fibrillation have absolutely no symptoms whatsoever. Other patients know immediately when they go into atrial fibrillation. People can have feelings of palpitations or skipped heartbeats, or they can actually feel symptoms of lightheadedness or dizziness. The heart has two chambers on the top called atria and two chambers on the bottom called ventricles. When people have atrial fibrillation, the top two chambers of the heart, the atria, don't contract. They're actually fibrillating, and so they're moving around ineffectively, and all the work is done by the bottom part of the heart, the ventricle. Atrial fibrillation predisposes patients to have a risk of having a stroke. The reason why is that the top chambers of the heart have a little outpouching called the appendage. This appendage or outpouching is a location where blood clots can form when the heart does not contract normally. And if a blood clot forms in that atrial appendage and breaks off and goes to the brain, a patient can have a stroke. In some patients, we cannot restore normal rhythm, so they're treated with what are typically referred to as anticoagulation or blood thinners to make sure blood clots don't form in the appendage and rate control to make sure that the heart rate doesn't go very, very fast. Some patients, especially the elderly patients that have a lot of comorbidities or other medical problems, they're really between a rock and a hard place. On one hand, they can't be on blood thinners because they have chronic bleeding or they fall frequently or unstable or if they've had a head bleed themselves. So on one hand, they can't be on it, but on the other hand, they know that if they're not on these blood thinners, they have a risk of having a stroke. In those patients, the FDA has approved two devices that are referred to as left atrial appendage occluders. The goal is to take patients that have atrial fibrillation that are on anticoagulants and cannot tolerate them for whatever reason, and they're seeking alternatives. These devices have been approved and they can be inserted through the groin to the right side of the heart, and we cross from the right side to the left side with a very small needle. Then we deliver a catheter into the left side of the heart and deploy one of these two devices that have been approved. Once the device is deployed, we have effectively sealed off that outpouching where blood clots form. There are two presently available left atrial appendage occluders. One is made by Boston Scientific called the Watchman Flex device, and the other one is made by Abbott called the Amulet device. Both are excellent devices and highly effective. So this really has revolutionized things where we're actually able to take those patients and we're able to seal off their left atrial appendage and eliminate that risk for a stroke. This doesn't mean that if you have a successful left atrial appendage occluder device that you're at zero risk for a stroke because there are many different causes for a stroke. But I just wanna point out that 95% of strokes that occur in patients with atrial fibrillation occur from this left atrial appendage, this outpouching, and that's what we're able to seal off with these occluder devices. MedStar Health has a very large left atrial appendage occluder program, and I think it's because we have very strong electrophysiology colleagues that do many catheter-based ablation procedures and see many patients with atrial fibrillation in consultation. Due to that large patient population that we see, we have many patients who are a candidate for left atrial appendage occluders.